Hello. For all those of you that do not yet know, a shadow is a Firebird mechanism whereby Firebird writes all data simultaneously to multiple files. Not shared, but completely identical copies. And these identical copies can be created using the command create shadow. When we're using such a command, I connect to the database, here, db1fdb, and enter create shadow. Spelt correctly, of course. Followed by a consecutive number, and then the shadow name. C, db, db1.shd. Not forgetting the inverted commas. So, what does Firebird do now? It creates an exact physical copy of this database and will now maintain both copies. That means each committed transaction is sent to both database files as long as the shadow is active. Only when I commit does Firebird perform the writing operations. As you can see, it's only taken 62 milliseconds for a 125 megabyte database file size. Yesterday, we looked at the 5 gigabyte address database, and when we created a shadow of that database, it only took around one and a half minutes. Normally, you now have the effect that not only the database itself is constantly maintained and updated, but also the shadow. If you close this briefly, then you will see that the shadow has also been updated. Don't worry that the shadow file is slightly smaller than the original database. For performance reasons, the original Firebird file is always 1 16th larger. Shadows are always the actual size. There's no one using the database file at the moment. Now, there's someone connected to the database. I could now, for example, make a quick alteration to a customer entry. Oh, and by the way, we haven't taken a look at this yet. Here are the names as generated by the initall procedure. They certainly look like real street names, place names, etc. What's also interesting here is the product table. These are the DVD titles. For example, Bunch, Snowman, Darkness with Kenneth Hopkins, Groucho Theron. There are certainly some interesting combinations resulting from the random product name generation. They might even give someone an idea for a new film. So, if we go back to the customer table and make a change to an address, for example ABC, and go out of it again, you can see that the shadow file has made exactly the same alteration. It doesn't make much sense to run the shadow file on exactly the same drive as the original database file, because if your main server fails, then you've lost both your database files, the original as well as the shadow. If you really want to secure against normal failures, for example, if you're worried about SSD and durability, then use two SSDs, one for the database and one for the shadow. The main advantage is now that this shadow file has exactly the same content. And because the original database file is pointing to the shadow at the moment, it can't be accessed. It blocks me. That's why I can now do the following. I go to the DB1 FDB registration info and perform a drop shadow. That means in this database there's a table. Oh, I'll go quickly to the DB Explorer and check show system tables. And go to the table RDB dollar files which contains any shadows that may exist. And this shadow file has a pointer on it specifying the location of the shadow. Normally Firebird at that moment when I enter the drop shadow one command, deletes the complete shadow file. However, I can use a small trick here by simply changing the shadow name. If I now use the drop shadow one command, it tries to delete db2, leaving the db1.shd just as it is. This db1.shd is now no longer a shadow. If I now try to connect to this database file, Firebird recognises that it is no longer an active shadow, so I can open it normally. That leads to the following small trick, which I showed you yesterday. I think I did it in this database here. Here you can see a technology. 
This is IB Expert Script Technology. You're forced to regularly commit, otherwise it won't work. This IB Expert script can be stored as a text file and executed using a command line version of IB Expert. For example, every night or each lunchtime, or when it suits you best. And then you can do the following. You can open a database connection. Do not let the CT interbase irritate you. This has nothing to do with interbase. In fact, as these days interbase is facing extinction, I'll change it to CT Firebird so that it looks better. So, we connect to this database with username, password, etc. Then we open the database and execute this statement. Then we commit. This takes as long as it is necessary for Firebird to create the new shadow. As soon as it receives the commit command for the shadow creation, Firebird makes a copy of all file contents in a second file. And when this has completed, then this second file exists. Then we simply perform an update on RDB$ files to say that my shadow isn't where Firebird thinks it is. Then we move on to the drop shadow statement to avoid deletion of the file. A really simple trick. We tested this yesterday with this database, which is approximately 5 GB or even 7 GB. The shadow creation, renaming and the shadow deletion took all together 1.5 to 2 minutes. A backup and restore took 25 minutes. A backup and restore does of course have certain technical advantages. A backup restore tidies up the database internally. But if you have an application where you wish, for example, to quickly back up the database during your lunch break, as a plan B, this is certainly a good option. We use it as a so-called turbo backup because it's considerably quicker than a normal backup, and in particular because you have a live, usable database immediately after generating the shadow. In particular, the generation of indices can take a long time with a database restore, and that doesn't happen here because the index pages and their contents are simply copied over to the shadow without having their selectivity recalculated.